Imagine yourself traveling with the sunlight photons. You would be crossing our solar system. Then you would pass through our thin ozone layer to finally reach the surface of the Earth. Imagine even further. You are now proceeding towards this little beach where you briefly land on this child's skin to observe the synthesis of vitamin D. This journey will allow us to discover and witness the effects of sunlight on the skin and the cascade of photochemical reactions leading to the genesis of sunlight-induced skin cancers. The stratum corneum and the hairiness retain the major part of the sunlight due to the reflective and absorbing properties of the keratin. The remaining part of the sunlight will then proceed to reach the tiny blood vessels of the dermis and the surrounding fibroblasts. How can such a common physiologic phenomenon eventually trigger oncogenetic mechanisms leading to skin cancer? To find out, let's travel again with our photons deep into the skin and focus on one of these cells suddenly aggressed by sunlight. When the photons hit the biological substrates in the cytoplasm, such as these water and oxygen molecules, they literally rip off electrons from their peripheral atoms' layers. This photolytic mechanism induces the secretion of reactive oxygen species, or ROS, which aggress and severely damage the surrounding biologic substrates, such as the DNA or the insaturated phospholipidic cell membrane. This damage is mostly incurred by UVA. Now let's travel further to witness the impact of UVB. UVB are directly absorbed by DNA where they induce structural genetic mutations such as these pyrimidine dimers. This induces a torsion of the molecule which may alter the DNA transcription process. Now if we travel back, we can see that these DNA lesions occur not only in the cell nucleus but also in the mitochondria. This may alter the energy production of the cell and have a significant impact on the aging process. Let's travel back further. Among the various ROS, we can observe nitric oxide, NO, produced by NO synthases. NO interacts with the surrounding capillaries and induces a vasodilation. This mechanism might explain the redness of the skin occurring after UV exposure. But it will also trigger the melanogenesis. And this leads us to the second part of our journey. The endogenous defense mechanisms induced by our organism. To find out more about them, let's dive again into the skin by following our sunlight photons. As we shall see, the skin develops endogenous antioxidative mechanisms of defense. Some are innate and some are induced. Our organism reacts by expressing an increased number of free radical scavengers. But as we can see, this first line of defense is pretty quickly exhausted. A second line is then needed the melanogenesis. By exploring these melanocytes, we can observe the melanosomes synthesizing two kinds of melanin. On the one hand, the ermelanin, which is hardly degraded by sunlight and plays a protective role by absorbing UV and acting as a scavenger of the ROS. And on the other hand, the pheomelanin, which plays both a photoprotective and a photosensitizing role. Indeed, by capturing photons and releasing their energy, it plays a photosensitizing role. This by forming an oxidative complex which degrades and eventually breaks the DNA strands. This may stimulate the carcinogenesis. Among the different factors contributing to skin carcinogenesis, 
The ratio between these two melanin subgroups plays a crucial role in the initiation and the development of cancers. When these antioxidative mechanisms are overwhelmed, the cell uses another line of defense. One of the main actors of this new chapter is the protein P53. The activation of P53 might either stop the cell life cycle to enable the cell repair mechanisms to correct the induced DNA lesions, or it can induce cell apoptosis. However, the P53 gene is itself sensitive to photo-induced lesions. If mutations occur on this gene, it loses its photoprotective capacities, and the way is open to skin carcinogenesis. Now let's travel upwards to the cell membrane to discover another crucial mechanism. All along this membrane, we can see various receptors which are growth factors receptors. They are also photoactivated. Photo exposure induces a phosphorylation of their intracellular tyrosine kinase domain. This triggers an intracellular signaling cascade, leading to the activation of the RAS-RAF MAP kinase pathway. This serine tyrosine kinase complex plays a crucial role in cancer as a regulator of cell proliferation, survival and migration. The hyperactivation of MAP kinases is nowadays considered as a hallmark of cancer. Let's broaden our perspective. As we can see, this mechanism affects not only a limited group of cells but the whole irradiated area. Hence the concept of field carcinogenesis. One may indeed see visible lesions and areas of transformed cells, but which still do not lead to visible lesions. It might be appropriate to treat not only the whole field of transformed cells and not only the visible lesions. Skin carcinogenesis has now occurred, but it will evolve in a very different way according to the affected cells. First, let's look at the keratinocyte. In this case, the genetically damaged cell has triggered a replication process. The abnormal cell replicates itself by reproducing its initial errors. This scenario may lead to an actinic keratosis, a spinocellular carcinoma or a basocellular carcinoma. Now let's have a look at this melanocyte. The modified cell also replicates itself, but in this case, it reproduces its mutations on a random basis. In other words, mutations occur all the time, and the mutations of the original cell differ from these of the metastatic cell. This explains the difficulty of any therapeutic strategy. Moreover, recent investigation has identified two kinds of melanoma. On the one hand, Slow-growing melanoma, which are mostly located on skin areas with an intermittent sun exposure, they mostly affect young adults and can be characterized by the ABCD clinical criteria, and on the other hand, fast-growing melanoma, which have a higher malignant grade. These fast-growing melanoma are defined as melanoma whose thickness may increase by more than half a millimeter per month. They represent a third of the cases and mostly occur among adults with few melanocytic nevus or actinic lentigo. The fast-growing lentigo have no direct relation with sun exposure, evolve pretty fast, and are characterized by the E criteria and often escape to the ABCD classification. This category of melanoma is the challenge of the future, which leads us to reconsider our diagnostic criteria and therapeutic strategies. In many cases, surgical excision appears as the most efficient therapeutic option. However, therapeutic vaccination and targeted immunotherapy bring new hopes. This is why the main strategy remains to help as much as we can our innate immune system. 
We can do this by early diagnosis, sun protection, and by helping, if needed, our endogenous anti-tumor immune response.